Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and when it comes to mobile gaming, seeing the enemy before they see you and then reacting fastest can be a matter of life or death. Okay, so I don't want to be overly dramatic, but competitive gaming, even on mobile, is serious business. And if a high refresh rate screen and also a high frame rate in your game means that you can potentially see the enemy before they see you, then versus a regular 60 hertz screen, well, it's quite a big difference actually. Most recent mid to high end phones can play mobile games pretty flawlessly. So the next bottleneck is your phone's refresh rate, which is basically how fast it can update the on-screen image. But with new phones offering high refresh, 90, 120, or even 144 hertz screens, compatible games look and feel so much smoother to play. And in some cases, the extra speed and responsiveness can even give you a competitive advantage. So most phones are 60 hertz, which means the screen refreshes 60 times per second. But on a 120 hertz screen, for example, it refreshes, well, 120 times per second, twice as often. So all the motion looks a lot more smooth, fluid, and realistic. And it's not just games that benefit. The whole UI feels more snappy to use, and text is easier to read while scrolling as there's less blur. Think of it this way, having a high refresh rate screen is basically unlocking extra performance that your phone already has. Let's say you're playing a game and you have a 60 hertz screen and you're getting 60 FPS. Great, you've maxed it out. But if that game supports 90, 120 or even 144 hertz, then assuming your phone is powerful enough, you're gonna get all those extra frames and a smoother experience. And it's not just phones where this is a big deal. I mean, gaming PCs, you know, the next generation of consoles, high frame rates, high refresh rates are a big deal. Now the tricky part is actually how I show you the difference between the different frame rates and the different refresh rates because this video is being shot at 60, well the gameplay is this little bit here is 30, uh, so you're not actually going to be able to see higher than 60, but through the miracle of editing and slow motion on my Panasonic GH5 camera and also some nifty software called GameBench which I've got installed on my PC so I just plug in my phone and I can now sort of run some tests on it. Hopefully you should be able to see the difference. This is Modern Combat Versus, which supports up to 120 hertz, and I'm getting a fairly solid 120 FPS. If we then slow the footage down, you can see we're getting double the number of frames, and their movement and animations look a lot more fluid. So the big question is, does having a high refresh rate phone actually make you any better in games? Does it make a difference? Well, I've got a few I'm gonna test out. Uh, the S20 Plus here does have a 120 hertz screen, but this is the UK model with a slightly iffy Exynos processor. So I'm actually gonna focus on the uh, Red Magic 5G here, Snapdragon 865, eight gigs of RAM, and actually a 144 hertz screen, although we'll talk more about that later on. So does it make a difference? Well, the time between frames adds a lot to the lag that you perceive between, say, making an import and then seeing the action on screen. So as the time between frames at higher frame rates is lower, you see the results of your or others' actions appear on the screen quicker. But that's not the whole story though, as the screen's touch sampling rate, which is basically how quickly it can detect inputs, is also a factor and tends to be higher on high refresh rate phones. So if we go frame by frame, we can see the enemy emerge earlier on the high refresh screen and we can see more of them sooner. Now this might not sound like a lot, but getting more up-to-date visuals can then help us react that bit quicker, which can be the difference between winning and, well, usually in my case, not so winning. Another advantage of higher frame rates is reduced blur, which is most noticeable when moving quickly in games. To be clear though, there is a difference between refresh rate and frame rate. You know, even if your phone can refresh 120 times per second, you're gonna have to get 120 frames per second in your game on the mobile phone to fully take advantage of that. If you're only getting 60 FPS, on a 120 hertz screen. Basically, you're only gonna see 60 hertz, and hopefully my uh, hand gestures in the air have made that clear. <laughs> so it does depend on how powerful your phone is, and also whether the game itself is capped at, say, 30 or 60 FPS to maintain a consistent level of performance. So high refresh is still new, but more and more Android phones are supporting it, and if the rumors of the upcoming iPhone 12 series are right, which I think they are, then we could be seeing 120 hertz on the new iPhone range, which kind of makes a new standard, especially for developers. So we should see a lot more phones and most importantly, a lot more games optimized for high refresh rates. And it was a similar story with all the 120 Hertz compatible games I played, even Fortnite. And it makes a huge difference to playability. Unfortunately, 120 Hertz in Fortnite is limited to the iPad Pro for now, but I'm hoping we'll see this roll out for other phones as well. But what about 144 Hertz with this guy? Well, maxing out the 144 Hertz panel in Shadow Fight 3 and Real Racing 3 looks, well, just incredible. Slowed down, we can see 2.4 times the number of frames compared to a 60 Hertz screen. And then when sped back up, it feels seriously slick. 
This is Dead Trigger 2, and if we compare the refresh speeds side by side, we can see just how many extra frames we're getting with the animations. I even found it easier to aim and shoot accurately playing at 144, as my imports felt more immediate on the screen. So I think 120Hz screens are going to be the new standard for mid to high end phones going forward, but as for 144, I think this is going to be more limited to dedicated gaming phones like the Red Magic or you know the Asus ROG phone, hopefully we'll see the third generation in the next couple of months. But hopefully as developers do start to offer higher framework compatibility with their games, in some cases either they'll develop for 144 as well or they'll essentially give us an unlocked frame rate so it'll max out whatever phone you have. This also seems to be the case with Minecraft, which topped out at 144 FPS, but this is a demanding game. So most of the time it runs at a lower frame rate, which varies quite a bit. This is where we run into an issue with games that can't reliably max out a set frame rate, meaning motion can feel a little bit more inconsistent. It does vary between phones though, but usually you can dial back the refresh rate to 90 or 60 if you have any compatibility issues or want to save on battery. Because battery life is an issue, running these screens at full tilt takes a lot of power and in some cases like with the Galaxy S20 series, you can only run at a full refresh rate at a reduced resolution. Okay, lastly and well leastly, 90Hz. The extra 30 frames jump from 60Hz is still well worth having, and for me it still enhances the overall feel of a phone more than most upgrades like a faster processor or more RAM. And I think it's great we're seeing 90Hz screens in slightly more affordable phones like the OnePlus 8, uh, also like the Huawei P40 Pro where uh, Huawei kind of want to balance that sort of smoothness versus the battery life, so it is still a big step up over 60. So you won't be surprised that I'm a big fan of high refresh rate gaming. I mean, it's been the standard for enthusiast PC gamers for years now, but we're finally seeing the next generation of consoles, the PS5, the Xbox Series X, uh, and also of course phones, offer high refresh rates. So with phones, it does drain the battery faster, and also you may get inconsistent frame rates depending on how powerful your phone is and how graphically, uh, can't even speak, how graphically demanding the game is. But we are starting to get the option, and if you're a competitive gamer or even just a casual gamer like me but want a better experience, then a high refresh rate phone, whether it's 90, 120, or even 144 hertz like this, makes a big difference. But what do you reckon? Are you excited for high refresh rate phones? And if you already have one, how much of a difference did it make to your gaming? Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do want to see more from me and help me get to that 1 million subscriber mark, uh, hit that little subscribe button down below and that would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.